Thank Dr. Balakrishnan, please. Thank you. Uh, so this is the topic, uh, NSAID steroids demands in RA, the 2022 view. Nothing much has changed, but many things have changed as well. So I think we need to know both. As far as NSAIDs in rheumatoid is concerned, the first and most important thing, it's never given alone, always with a disease modifying agent at the beginning. Over the period of time, at least I have started using it in younger patients and trying to avoid it in those who are older with have comorbidities because NSAIDs do cause more problems in them. Usually for a short period of time, by short period of time I mean two to four weeks because if you have given the proper disease modifying agent, you should not need an NSAID for more than two to four weeks. You are often able to switch over to simpler analgesics which can take care of the pain. Longer acting NSAIDs are still used and the older ones which we are using are still being used including diclofenac, indomethacin, the ones with sustained release are very useful to prevent the morning stiffness. Short acting NSAIDs have a great role in lactating mothers because its half life is about three, four hours so you can ask the mother to feed, take an NSAID at that time and by the time the next feeding cycle comes in four to six hours, NSAID has already gone away from the milk, breast milk so it's a good thing to do any NSAID can be used. Often we give the, a choice of one or two to the patient and one man's meat is another man's poison, so you have to leave it to the patient many times. And never give combination of NSAIDs. That's the worst thing that we can do as far as GI side effects and renal side effects are concerned. You can always combine an NSAID and an analgesic, but never two anti-inflammatories. As far as steroids in rheumatoid are concerned, again, never given alone used as a bridge therapy. Bridge therapy meaning you start both the steroid and the disease modifying agents together. Over a period of time you taper out the steroid or, and then continue with the disease modifying agent. Injectable Depomedrol, in fact I remember that when I came back from UK somewhere in 94, that was the first time uh, when I came back to Professor Joshi, he, he was not using injectable Depomedrol at that time but it, they were being used quite frequently abroad in the UK. So I came back and said, this is something that we should start, and we started at that time. 120 milligram intramuscular is a very good dose, and rarely they need a second dose. It acts for about three to four weeks, by which time many of the disease-modifying agents that we are using now have started acting. Oral steroids, if you use, you can use any of them, and you use uh, maybe about, for an adult, would be 15 milligrams to 20 milligrams and taper it out over four to six weeks. Potency-wise, methylprednisolone is more potent than prednisolone, which is more potent than deflazocort. The newer drugs, newer steroids have come, and everybody is coming to you with a new name for that. But the older steroids still work. Oral, best given in the morning. If it's a very large dose, you divide it into two, three doses. But otherwise, one single dose in the morning does not suppress the hypothalamic pituitary axis much. So that's the best thing to do. It's good in elderly too, because NSAIDs become more of a problem. They have a lot of comorbidities, including blood pressure, diabetes, they have a mild renal dysfunction, and creatinine is notoriously bad in picking up renal dysfunction, because a lot of the renal reserve should go before the creatinine rises. So if you are in doubt, please give uh, steroids for a short while, even a dose. Adverse effects, it's said that deflazocort has less than prednisolone, is less than methylprednisolone. But the last line is what I want to leave you with. In the end, in most cases, it is not which steroid you use, but how you use it that matters. And if you give proper disease-modifying agents, you would not need to give too much of steroids. So these are the disease-modifying agents which we have been using for the past almost two and a half to three decades now. We call them conventional, small molecules, and biologic. The time does not permit me to go through in details of all, but we'll just give a little bit. The first and foremost thing is, again, in a patient who is coming to you for the first time as a monotherapy, methotrexate or salazapirine or leflunamide as a single therapy may not be a bad idea. But somebody who has come to you already on treatment is not doing well, then multidrug therapy may not be a bad idea. So adding one more drug. Combination of conventional DMARDs are used and should be tried before giving biologics, which is often not done. Methotrexate, salazopirine, hydroxychloroquine, or at times methotrexate and leflunamide, which is a very potent combination, but more hepatotoxic, so you have to be very careful when you're giving a combination of methotrexate and leflunamide, okay? Be, be very careful. Step up versus step down. Step up meaning adding one more after six weeks if he's not better, or add everything together and taper out. It depends on you. I do the step up because I think if you use one drug properly, many times the disease comes under control. With the recent introduction of the small molecules called tofacitinib and baricitinib, it has been a boon. 
and it is reasonably cheap and can be used before we go to the higher end biologics which are more expensive. So we are using that a little bit more frequently now. This is a very important slide. It is inadequately and inappropriately used, methotrexate. Still the cornerstone, oral treatment, please make sure that the patient at least switches to subcutaneous before you say it is not working. After 15 milligrams, oral bioavailability go down. So we make it subcutaneous and then go up to even 25 milligrams, which is often well tolerated if you do that. Single dose, maximum dose of 25, need to give folic acid at least one to two tablets per week and to be stopped three months before a planned pregnancy. This is just a tabular column of the other conventional DMARDs, salazopyrin, all of us know, we have been using it for many, many years. We now go up to three grams in a day. So this uh, tabular column, I'm not going into the details. Leflunamide was a good addition when it came about. We used to give loading doses for three days, 100 milligrams, and then give, but nowadays that is not required. The loading dose costs a lot of hepatic problems, so we don't do that. We directly give uh, 10 milligrams or 20. Hydroxychloroquine is still used. These are the two small molecules of which tofacitinib is being used much more than baricitinib. You just have to be careful as far as the hepatic side effects are concerned. You need to do HBSAG in HCV. And the other major concern of tofacitinib has been deep venous thrombosis. So you need to be careful who are in patients who are more moribund and you have other factors that can cause thrombosis. But otherwise, 5 milligrams twice a day is a good addition even to methotrexate in patients who are not getting control. Biologics are usually used when others are not giving response. Added to methotrexate, parenteral, and expensive. This is a large slide, I'm not going into it. There are three kinds. The first three given there are called TNF blockers. Then there is rituximab, and then there is tocilizumab. All these have their own side effects, especially infections, and they're all expensive, so you need to be very careful when you start this. So I'm going to the conclusions. NSAIDs use less than before, used shorter while than before, used in more in the young with less comorbidities. Steroids can be a very good initial option, oral for four to six weeks or one or two injectables four weeks apart. Methotrexate is underutilized, not properly given, and people are stepping over to more expensive and newer drugs without trying proper methotrexate. That's something that we see. And biologics and tofacitinib are usually added on later on for resistant disease. Thank you.